wrapped up and it's that is the death spiral deals and death spiral financing um could you give me like a, a better understanding of what that is and what it entails mm -hmm. um the name used by investment firms that offer this is convertible debentures or pipe which means private investment in public equity. The targets are, uh, they would say clients, I would say targets, are generally small companies who need capital, but aren't at the stage where they can get cash from stock sales or bank loans or bonds. And in one case, the investment firm says, we will lend you two and a half million dollars. That's the sum that was promised the company that was caught in this trap. It would be paid back in stock equivalent um, from, from two and a half million the loan was two and a half million. They would pay back stock equivalent to three million. Uh, but at various dates, the investors would request conversions of uh, the, the debentures until the three million was paid back. The company hopes this money will help them grow and the stock price will grow up, will go up. And this makes this a very good deal. They don't know that some of the investment company uh, people uh, or the, and the people they're working with are corrupt. Uh, now you have to know about naked short selling. Uh, naked short selling, uh, short selling is where uh, the uh, an investor sells a share he doesn't own. Yes, this is allowed by the SEC and other countries and must borrow or locate it in the stock of some other company that has that stock. Borrow means his broker uh, borrows it from another broker who takes it from a margin account uh, of, of a client who permits the stock to be loaned because they're not p paying for the whole amount of stock in cash. And uh, they get the uh, broker gets interest on the loan and sends the borrowed shares to the buyer. Uh, to, to the seller who sell, sends them to the buyer. In, in two days, the short seller must pay back the loan. A locate means the broker knows where the stock can, stock can be obtained. This is usually fake, doesn't really know anything. And the seller must send the shares to the buyer in two days. But the naked short sellers never cover. They never send the shares to the buyers to begin with or after, after the two days. And they increase the number of shares in the marketplace because the uh, the buyer who never got delivery uh, in, in the DTCC, which is the clearinghouse for shares, that person has gotten a digital entitlement. Well, the owner, of the, the real owner of the shares still has a digital entitlement. So you increase the number of shares in the market and that drives down the price. And when they are involved in death spiral financing, uh, that's what happened. So, but it's but it's it's deliberate to the point of real conspiracy. Uh, the naked short sellers knock down the share price. So by the time the conversions are required, each tranche will be paid back in many times more stock. So that if three million would have given just take a number, the lenders a tenth of the company. By the time they're through, they'll own most of the company, or maybe even push it to bankruptcy which means they never have to cover the shorts, the naked shorts, because there are no more shares. Uh, so let me tell you about a particular case, uh, Eagle Tech, based in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. It was started by Rod Young, who had developed the use of a single telephone line for one number, follow me telephone service. Now it's not so surprising. At that time, 20 years ago, it didn't exist. He needed money to develop the invention and he fell into a death spiral trap. He thought the deal was honest because it was sponsored by Solomon Smith Barney, then owned by Citigroup. Meetings were held at their offices. Uh, notices were sent out on small Solomon Smith Barney letterhead and in Solomon Smith Barney envelopes. The Solomon leader of the deal, John Dorowski, worked with a bunch of mafiosi, literally mobsters, who fronted for investors that were really offshore shells. Uh, the agreement that Eagle, Ta Eagle Tech signed with Solomon banned naked short selling. But the chief mobster involved in the deal, John Cerubo, paid illegal commissions to some cooperating brokers to do just that, naked short sell, not cover. So, And then the investments didn't materialize, or they were canceled out by the massive naked short selling. 
uh, but and and other so-called uh, proper uh, companies were involved. Knight Securities, a broker dealer, facilitated a series of coordinated, synchronized short sales to drive down the price. Uh, in one case, a high of thirteen point two five to uh, seven point seven five dollars, and, and giving uh, the shorts a profit of five and a half dollars. So, at a certain point, this kept happening. Eagle Tech finally uh, smelled a rat and refused any more conversions uh, that would transfer the company to the Solomon Smith Barney uh, co-conspirators. Now, the FBI, FBI was investigating some organized crime stock fraud. Uh, it busted 17 mob members in New Jersey, led by the crooks that ran the scheme against Eagle Tech in cooperation with Solomon Smith Barney. It never got near Solomon Smith Barney. In February 2005, the SEC brought a securities fraud case against Sarubo, a leader of the mob, and more than a dozen others. It said they uh, generated over $12.7 million from the sale of stock. And Sarubo and the other mobsters would be banned from penny stock trading in order to pay back the ill-gotten gains. Now, Solomon Smith Barney was a member of the New York Stock Exchange, which is subject to oversight by the SEC. And the SEC and the Justice Department never got involved in looking into the role of Solomon. Uh, Eagle Tech's lawyers, uh, and Wes Christian, the main lawyer, told me, we contacted the SEC on that and got no response at all. Uh, he said it was gross negligence. I think it's more than negligence. I think it's corruption. So the court dismissed the Eagle Tech suit because it said, it lumped 29 defendants together and failed to identify which defendant made which statement, which I think on the face of it, when there's a conspiracy, it's, it's pretty outrageous. Um, then the SEC, th th this is the, the final, the, the coup de grace. The SEC filed suit against the victim, Eagle Tech, to deregister its shares because it couldn't afford several hundred thousand dollars to file audited financial reports. So delisting is like a bankruptcy. All the investors are wiped out. The naked shorters never have to cover. So the SEC figured what the mob started. It killed the company. There's a very similar story happened about the same time. Sedona was a software firm based in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania. It was making relationship management software for companies. Again, this was two decades ago. There wasn't a lot of it around. It had some deals uh, working with IBM and other top, top line financial companies. It wanted to hire more staff for sales and marketing. So in this case, the uh, investment banker was uh, Ladenburg Falman which was considered a very high level uh, investment company. It was prominent. It was a member of the New York Stock Exchange since 1879. Its major investor was Carl Icahn. Uh, uh, from this company was um, a man named Michael uh, Vasinkovich. He was uh, soliciting Sedona's business, promising he could help finance the company growth. He could get Sedona, that's the 2.5 million, in a pipe deal, private investment in public equity. He was working with two Austrian brothers, the Badians, and they were introduced as investment advisors. They work through a network of offshore funds, advisors, directors, who seek out target companies. The investors, the shell companies in this case, were controlled by Herbert Batliner, who according to a 1999 German intelligence document, which I obtained, was in the business of laundering illicit funds. And the US prosecutors told a Colorado federal court in 1999, and this is public, Batliner had handled money for drug dealer Jorge Hugo Reyes Torres, then was uh, serving a prison sentence in Ecuador. So this, this fine group, uh, the Badians, through their Rhino investors, their shell company, pumped two and a half million into Sedona in 2000. And uh, they made a convertible debt offering, which would be converted uh, at various points. And the deal was written, the investors would not short sell the stock. But of course, that, that would be a lie uh, because short selling would push down the share price and 
they would get um, more shares for the three million. So it came time to convert uh, the shares. Uh, when the deal was signed in 2000, the stock was trading at six dollars a share. They uh, in a month they pumped it up uh, to. Uh, 10, 25 from six. Then a long slide. Every time the company put out good news, such as a relationship with IBM, which should have made the stock go up a lot, uh, there was a heavy sell through electronic communications networks that allow the seller to hide behind uh, the ECN. And in a month, the Confederates pushed down the stock to one dollar, one dollar and one cent. Now. When, when Andreas bought in, learned the price of the stock had fallen below a dollar, he told the brokers at Westminster, a uh, fine New York uh, brokerage, according to tapes, which now w became part of one of the legal cases, to, quote, keep selling and use unbridled levels of aggression because every dollar that you sell is a dollar in my pocket. And meanwhile, the phony clients were converting the shares to cash. And so they ended up, Sedona still owed 1.9 million after all the conversions, and uh, they were uh, deposited. The uh, the shares were potted, deposited into another fine firm, Westminster Securities in New York, and Pershing, a clearing firm for Westminster, shared office space with some of the body and funds. I'm trying to point out that, like in the, the Eagle Tech case, you have some very grungy crooks and you have some very fine Wall Street firms. Uh, body and directed Westminster to engage in manipulative short selling and Pershing brokered the transaction. Another company, a market maker named Frankel, made fake book entries that uh, said it had bought the shares through a broker in Canada. And uh, so, Sedona one day received an investigator's 330 page ring binder. There's an investigator, I think I know who it was, had been in looking into the, 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 this whole uh, special part of the naked short selling scams, the death spiral financing. He had an, an analyzed 60 companies destroyed by the Bodians and similar operators. And then in 2001, Bodium demanded another conversion. So Sedona decided it was dealing with crooks and it refused. It got an appointment with the SEC and the Justice Department, had meetings. Uh, the SEC found out that 82 companies uh, reporting investments by the same scammers of them, 81 lost almost 40% of market value in the first year. And Sedona lost a lot of business because if your stock is tanking, companies don't want to buy, buy software that you are not going to be around to service. So Sedona had to fire employees in sales and marketing. So following meetings uh, between Sedona uh, and the Justice Department and the SEC, the SEC in 03 filed a complaint against Bodian and his company for fraud and market manipulation. You know what the settlement was? It was $1 million. That was chump change. That was the cost of doing business. And they did not, ha did not have to admit or deny guilt. They were mass big time crooks. They got off. The Justice Department charged Body in a criminal case. He jumped bail and is a fugitive in Vienna. And then finally, the, the Justice Department just dropped its criminal case uh, against Andreas, and it would not say why. So in, in May of 03, that's when Wes Christian got involved. He filed a civil suit uh, for Sedona against Ladenburg, which was the, the big guy, and Vasinkovich, Bodian, and some others. Uh, finally, the SEC filed a suit against Bodian, but not against Ladenburg and, uh, or against we Westminster or any of the other major brokers involved. And Wes Christian told me, the U.S. government chose to go after the low-hanging fruit, the Bodians. They had the clearing firm, the broker dealers, they had it all, but they dropped it. The judge in New York sat on the cases for nearly a decade. She dismissed most of the Sedona defendants, including Bodian uh, and uh, uh, Vasinkovich, and the alleged co conspirators, uh, Pershing, Westminster, Frankel, got a got a pass from the SEC and the Justice Department. Finally, uh, Wes Christian settled with Ladenburg Thalman. He can't indicate uh, the, the, the 
uh, not the money of the settlement, but obviously Ladenberg at a certain point decided it might not be good publicity for them. So Sedona is still in business. It now has a market cap of 1.9 million. The stock is trading at two cents. This is what death spiral financing does. Yeah, I mean, it's it sounds like such a predatory practice. It's it's really it's really difficult for me to try and like get my head around just just how this is allowed. Um, that's is, this is one of the things that I'm having the most trouble with at the minute with trying to write this story is that. And I, I mentioned this to Carl Hagberg is that when I try to try to try to say okay, and I explain this story to someone, they just go, "That sounds like you're wrong. That can't be how it works. Like it can't be this corrupt, or it can't be this like openly." Um, no, Carl, Carl was uh, uh, unhappy with my use of the word fraudulent, <laughs> but that's what it looks like uh, just to someone who's, who's only come into this now. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, follow me on Twitter, or sign up to our mailing list. Thanks a lot to our sponsor, ExpressVPN, the number one most trusted VPN. Get lightning fast connectivity with servers in 160 locations across 94 countries. Keep your browsing privacy safe with ExpressVPN and get a 35% discount on 12 months of ExpressVPN when you follow the link in the description below. Don't forget my book is now out and available to order on Amazon and on bookshop.org. That's Brexit, the Establishment Civil War. And most importantly, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.